Hello again and welcome to my The Omega Protocol series videos. This series would feature some of the things that my group has done during our first few weeks of top and how we translated all our savage knowledge into the ultimate fight itself. This fight so far has been a great one and dare I say it has been so fun progging it. So the first few phases will bring back familiar mechanics you've seen throughout the old Omega Savage fights that you may have done back then and even if you've not done the old Savage fights, fear not for it still does bring back similar vibes from the other Ultimate fights as well. Phase 1 of top brings our favorite Spinny Beetle back and with mechanics you've definitely seen from Savage, but now all on steroids. It does require some thinking, but with some priority systems set out for your groups, this phase can be done and gone in a lockout or two. So without further ado, here's just a simple way on what my group did and how we translated our O11S knowledge into this phase. Disclaimer for all, these are not set and specific ways to solve each of the mechanic. Instead, these are just one of the suggested ways we chose to do and how my group brought in all our raiding knowledge into play and came up with some of the strats we are currently doing for this fight. Alright, so what are we waiting for? Let's get started. So this stage requires the group to soak tethers and towers and just like you've seen in O11S, you can definitely set up like a priority system for your whole entire group to resolve this mechanic. My group came out with a priority system in which before the phase starts, as you can see in all these clips that we'll be playing on screen right now, we pre-position left or right to let our teammates know which sites we're going to. So our soft priority system would be something like a group 1 light party would go clockwise motion, group 2 light party would go counterclockwise motion in a TMRH lineup. So based on our TMRH lineup, the tanks would always take the farthest tether and tower, while the healers would always take the closest tether and tower to them. In order to resolve this mechanic with little amount of confusion, you could always shimmy yourself in a direction towards the site you are going to, or keep to your clockwise and counterclockwise priority consistent. Players will be marked 1, 2, 3, and 4 on their debuff list, and this will show you which towers you would be soaking, while the tethers would have to be soaked in a 3, 4, 1, 2 order. A really quick tip when dealing with these extra sticky tethers, they can be really funky to deal with so make sure to just go around the boss in the hitbox so your other partner is able to see which tether you're about to grab. Avoid being in the center of the boss's hitbox since it is really difficult for people to see where you may be going. If things go wrong, if there is too much to think about, especially when priority systems may be too much for some to take in, you could always eyeball the whole entire mechanic so long as tethers are taken away from the party and the towers are soaked accordingly. So once all of this whole tether tower mechanic nightmare is already done, another familiar mechanic from the Savage version of O11 will come back to this fight everybody's favorite spinny helicopter phase called Pentacrater. This mechanic can be resolved in two ways in which you can either split your group into two light parties again with one party each having tanks, healer, and DPS or the other version which was what my group chose to do is one light party with supports and the other light party with DPS. Both ways work really well, just do what your group prefers doing. In my case, it was easier for us to split the party list into supports versus DPS, which made it really simple for our flexors to look out when they should actually flex for each of their light parties. Just like in the Savage version, you will be dodging a series of cleaves and AoEs dropped on the ground, so watch your footing. My group opted to do party leading, missile lagging, since it was easier for us to maneuver as a group. It is possible to do it the other way, missile leading, party lagging as well. I just prefer this since my group found it to be safer and easier. There will be a lot of damage going out over here so make sure to throw out necessary mitigations for this phase. As usual, you will be marked 1, 2, 3, and 4 again. Flexors will just have to watch out for their respective buddies in their light parties and adjust if they find themselves having the same number as their light party buddy. The numbers 1, 2, 3, and 4 indicates the targeted missile onto you, so to resolve this, you would have to strafe yourself out of your light party stack to drop the missiles outside of the party's safe spot. 
So once the merry-go-round is resolved, there will be tank busters and proteans for the party to bait. You may set static spots for the proteans and the tanks can actually stack on top of one another with their inbounds to soak their tank busters. Tanks, be careful when you are taking these busters because these busters are actually proximity based. So when you are taking your busters, be sure to be max melee from the boss and the party move in a little bit so you don't accidentally bait the tank busters into your faces. Alright, so once the helicopter nightmare is already done, once you meet the DPS check, Omega will disappear and part 2 will start with Omega M and F. I'll continue part 2 in the next video, so if you want to keep in touch with my content, be sure to hit the subscribe button and follow my social media on Twitter and also Twitch if you haven't already. Hopefully this video somewhat gives people an idea on how the first phase works because this is probably the most annoying part of the whole entire fight. So um, I guess with consistency and also set priorities, this phase can be done at a decent pace with good amount of focus. So my next video will be about part 2 Omega MNF phase and it will just showcase about how my group decided to resolve this mechanic. It may not be the best way to do but it's actually showcasing on what we did as a group together. So if you want to keep in touch with me, feel free to follow my Twitter and also my Twitch channel that is going to be linked in the description box down below. So smash that like and subscribe button if you haven't already and I'll catch you all next time.